All right, what's up everybody? This is your girl, Miss Sophia the Diva. And for the first time, I will be reviewing for you Married to Medicine. Now, my friend Felicia has been begging me to do a review of this show, but I must say I just felt like watching it this season. I kind of always watched it, but not like in depth. I think I watched the first season. That's when they had the one honorary white woman on there and then they had a fight at her house and she and somebody fell in the pool and she was like, these Negroes can't come back to my house again. Yeah, that's the last time I pretty much consistently watch it, but I pretty much knew all the characters, especially Dr. Jackie because she's always popping up on things quad because she's just quad honey I'm just everywhere okay uh, she's also in that show sister circle which this show started out on life support and I think part of the problem is that it doesn't look like any of the cast has really had any maybe they should have had some team building exercises before they got started now please forgive me if I chop up any of the names or anything like that because I may not get everybody right but I know we have Dr. Jackie, Dr. Simone, Dr. Heavenly I love her oh my god she is crazy I love her. She's the dentist. I think her husband is an actual medical doctor. Of course, I know uh, Quad is married to Dr. G, who is a psychiatrist. Because I know, I think Dr. G talked to Phaedra uh, during the show. And Quad came to Cynthia's party, by the way, on uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. So we have a lot of crossover and going on. Dr. Jackie's husband, Curtis, has decided that uh, he... Uh, no longer wants to be married because he feels as though he is neglected. Uh, my thing is, is that you knew you married a working professional woman. What does Curtis do anyway? Can Comment down below. Let me know what he did or does. I don't know if he's retired or what. But Dr. Jackie, as from what I remember, she's a breast cancer survivor. Um, one of the most in-demand OBGYNs in Atlanta especially for celebrities, a very successful woman, but it, it, it appears to be one of those situations where can you as a woman have it all? Can you? And that question, I mean, it's kind of hard to answer these days. Can we have it all as women? But Curtis decided that instead of doing the honorable thing and filing for divorce or f filing a formal separation, he decides he's going to go out and get him a side chick. He's going to, uh, you know, he doesn't care. Uh, a baseball cap ain't gonna cover up who you are. Everyone knows who you are, sir, especially in Atlanta. This show opens up with um, the Waiting to Excel uh, episode opens with uh, Dr. Jackie making up her bed and saying she never thought she'd see herself like this. But it happens even to the best of us. Some of us think that we have these great men and then one day they just pack up and leave because they feel as though you're not giving them what you need. And I thought something very powerful was said in an episode of Yana Van Zandt. She said she put up with it for 14 years and she said he doesn't know how to love me basically and I don't want to be loved like this. Is this the only way he knows how to love me? He hasn't been paying attention. I thought he would finally get it. And I think in some respects Dr. Jackie may have known that her marriage had been on the rocks for quite some time. Uh, you, you don't want anyone to be unhappy, so you just let them go on about their merry way. Toya and her husband, I forgot, what what is her husband's name? Either way, uh, they were the ones, I remember, that it was announced they were $170,000 in debt with the IRS. Hey, it happens. Because um, I got a lot of money. I, I don't owe that much, but shit, might as well. It feels like it that and you've got student loan debt too. But I'm glad that they're really working on getting their budget together because I mean you want to have something for yourself as well as your kids. I mean that is the end goal right? If you have children you definitely want to make sure they're provided for. Uh, most parents should anyway you know at least have something for college at least be able to pay for books every semester or, or something you know even if you can't pay full tuition. But I think it's great. And plus, it's an example for, for your family. Dr. Heavenly said that she got mad at her husband when she found out that Curtis had cheated. Oh, Jackie, I was mad at you. You know what? Um, We took vows, honey. Well, you're going to end up in the ditch. I'll kill your ass. I was like, this heifer is gangster. This, it, it seems to be a rippling effect throughout this group dynamic that we have that the whole Jackie marriage, it brought to light the fact that any of their marriages, could it, it could happen to any of them. Then on top of that, Dr. Heavenly, I do remember her little smart mouth child. That daughter of hers, 
she is so disrespectful. And I get that that's your daughter. And maybe maybe Dr. Heavenly is an older parent and feels like she can't control her daughter. But Alora, Lair, whatever her name is, she need her little ass tightened up. There is no way you talk to your mama like that. It's not cute. And then she's going to get out in the mad real world and find out that not everyone is going to bend to your wheels. As a matter of fact, in some ways, when I was sitting there listening to how a little girl talk to her mama, I mean, you know, I thought you were making all A's. That's what I show you. I'm like, what? I mean, who who talks? <sighs> Spare the word, Rod. Spoil the child. And then she told me she ain't seen her son. And I was like, he probably didn't want to be smothered. Okay. He love you, mama, but he don't want to be smothered. Okay. Reminds me of that housewife. What's her name? The one they that lost everything. Her, the Black Bill Gates. Either way, that reminds me of her son. Like, he done ran off. He's like, I don't want to be in the house with you. So, either way, she going to take over his closet. And her daughter like, why? You don't need to. I was like, oh, God. Either way, that irked me. And then she talking about, okay, mama going to pray for you. I was like, pray for her and tighten her ass up. At some point in this episode, Quad and Toya meet up to talk. And Toya has this, in some respects, with a lot of women at this I'm put it this way, I'm 40, and at, at this stage of the game, I'm always thinking, when I do get married, yes, I will be there for my husband, you know, helping him, supporting him. I'm his rib, so I'm on his side. I got his side, you know, but I got his back, too. But some things, I'm like, girl, um, Toya, basically, she has the traditional thinking. And I don't want to drag anyone for that because I know I have friends that are married and that's how they are. Ask your husband, can you go somewhere and do something? Can you spend this? Great. That's why we need to have three bank accounts. I know a lot of people don't like Steve Harvey, but I think that's some good advice. The main for the house and everybody get an allowance. Not to mention, you also have a joint savings as well. I should say that. So you, you're going to have about four or five different accounts on average as far as when it comes to liquid assets so there you go but I think that she was trying to go in on quad about the fact that she hadn't given babies to so was there anyone else like me who was like when quad drove up in her panorama that I want that need an oil change girl you know every few miles don't tear up that good car now girl because if you don't want you can just hand it off to me okay but um she had all these blue balloons in the car and I was like oh maybe Quad finally got pregnant because I have always known that throughout this show it's been a point of contention between her and her husband that he wants children and it was understood after so many years of marriage or whatever milestone she had hit that she would give him a child but of course all this time Quad has been backpedaling which I think in some respects is unfair but I can also understand that what Dr. G needs to understand is that as women, childbirth is terrifying for some of us. I truly believe that I was traumatized at age nine, um, being in the maternity ward with my mom when my brother was born. So, I mean, it is what it is. But she had all these blue balloons she taken out. I was like, she to my, and Dr. G and I have some news. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's pregnant with a boy. No, Dr. G now has his own practice. Congratulations to him. And so she's been helping do everything. And quite frankly, Quad feels because she does so much as a wife in a supportive capacity, which we as wives or... Well, I'm just going to speak minds into existence. My Boaz is coming. But, you know, we, we support our husbands. Um, but I don't, I really thought she was going to say she was about to have a boy, but okay. Congratulations on the new office. You've given birth to a business. Okay. Dr. Heavenly is very, very concerned about her girl, Jackie. So she decides to host a wait to exhale party. She was saying who everybody was. She said, of course, uh, Dr. Jackie is Bernadine. Uh, she said that, uh, did she say Toya was a little bit like Leela Rashawn? Either way, everybody got to sign one except Quad. She's talking about, I don't know who she is. I said, you know what? Heavenly, stop. Stop. And I don't know what their relationship is like. If you can comment down below and let me know, is there any type of conflicts that have happened, which I'm sure there have, between Quad and, uh, Dr. Heavenly. I think the setup was great. I think having the male models there to serve and provide massages was awesome. 
Uh, I think it, it was great to have a girls night in at a nice little hotel and, and just have, have shits and giggles, basically, the Wave and Exhale party. Because remember, in the book and in the movie, they had they were celebrating Loretta Devine's character's birthday and everybody was eating and, and, and fellowshipping and having a good time with one another. And then Dr. Heavenly was giving bad marital advice, in my opinion, uh, telling them, don't tell your husband. It's okay to keep secrets from your husband. I was like, the only secret you need to be keeping is the fact that uh, I'm having a surprise birthday party for you, so we're not going to tell you until the day of the party when you show up and everybody says, surprise. Then Dr. Heavenly, she's so, she's so ratchet, but I like her. I, I like this, uh, but I, I will say this. You got one time to call me bitch. Uh, there's only one of my friends that actually gets away with that and because I love her so dearly. She knows who she is, Camille. But language, she said, because Dr. Jackie, when she came in, Dr. Jackie looked like she was just going to fall to pieces. But she was overwhelmed with all these different emotions because if you catch, Dr. Jackie said that she tends to internalize her emotions. And I'm like, Dr. Jackie, you of all people know. And I truly believe that for those of us that don't have genetic uh, breast cancer issues, a lot of our issues come from um, us internalizing things instead of letting our emotions out. Like, it's okay to cry. It's okay to get angry. Um, the negative affects our physiological makeup. So, you know, with Dr. Jackie, I'm like, girl, don't internalize it. Even if you don't want to share with the ladies, it, please tell me you are going to see someone in counseling or therapy and taking time out for yourself. Um but like we all know, with most caregivers, they end up being the ones that suffer the most by not taking care of themselves because they're too busy caring for others. Uh, but when Dr. Heavenly said, bitch, you better not cry, kick your ass. I was like, what the fuck? Who talks to their... Lord Jesus. I said, that's when uh, you would have gotten smooth, cussed out and called a motherfucker and everything else for calling me a bitch. Don't do that. Like I said, I only have one friend that gets away with that. And that's because I love her dearly. And I know that when she says it to me, it's just who she is. Okay. Then there was the conversation about should she stay or should she go? And Toya talking about um, your husband should be your everything. Your husband should come first. Now, I do agree with that to some capacity. It should be God, your family, your job, so forth. However you want to set it up. But for me, number one, God is first but my thing is Curtis knew when he married her and like Dr. Jackie was even saying you married a doctor so you knew what I had to do I'm an OBGYN I mean you get up all times of day and now you have to schedule c-section all of this either way I hope Toya's husband don't leave her quad says she would be out uh Dr. Heavenly says she would be staying was Dr. Simone there I don't remember what she said. I find it interesting about Dr. Simone that they have a North house and a South house. It must be nice to be balling like that to have two homes. I've always thought about that too. Like, especially living in LA, you, let's say that I was to get a job in downtown LA. Do I really want to give up my home in Long Beach? No. I would have to, I would have to rent something and then keep the home I purchased. I haven't purchased anything, but I'm just saying in, in theory, a lot of people do that, but usually it's people that have these really nice professional jobs. Um, cause I mean, the, the commuting kills you. I thought that was interesting. I do like what Dr. Jackie schooled all the ladies on. And that is the fact that everyone can say what they would do. But until it happens to you, if you walked in your shoes, you can't say what you would do. And that's a fact. I have been in situations where I have reflected back on times when I've thought about what my friends were in. And I'm like, I see now why they chose to stay and do whatever so judge not until it happens to you you'll never know so i think dr jackie was given some uh, good advice honestly but this season based upon the previews coming up for this season i didn't know whether we was married to medicine we on with marriage boot camp looks like a lot of conflict going on looks like that that the couple's getaway is gonna be uh 
Oh Lord, look like some some words are gonna be exchanged and some marriages, more marriages might be breaking up. Might not nobody be married to married to medicine or anything. So um, and then I found this meme online. I can't remember what website I found it, but it did say something that I feel like is a lesson we can take from um this particular episode, and that is the bottom line: a man should take care of his woman, and a woman should take care of her man. No one is before the other. It's about teamwork. And I have never been married. So all I can tell you is that from what I know on the outside looking in, marriage is a lot of hard work. And if you want to enter into it, don't just do it because it's a cute look like an accessory or a handbag. No, it's a lot of hard work, sweetie. But that is all that I have on um, my very first review of episode one of Married to Medicine. Actually, just my first review, period. Um, I've peripherally watch the show but I've never really gotten into it but it, I just it came on after the escape which I'm going to talk about escape as well I just thought it would be good to review it because I think there's a lot of issues especially considering that Yana Van Zandt also has been dealing with the marital issues of some couples uh cheating and infidelity and just breaking up but Either way, for those of you who are married or in long-term committed relationships, uh, I commend you because uh, I know it's a lot of hard work. But thank you guys for joining. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Comment down below. Like this video. Share it. Sharing is caring after all. Show the diva that you care is by sharing it. Anywho, uh, I have been Miss Sophia the Diva. You have been all that. And be sure to make your own magic.